This weekend post mimicking Sony's black and white creative style in Lightroom. Hey everybody, I'm Scott Davenport. Welcome to In Post. Thanks for joining me today. If this is the first time you're checking out my channel. Thanks for giving me a shot. I hope you like what you see. Check out a few of my other videos. And if you'd like it, please subscribe to the channel. So uh, today I'm going to continue with what I did earlier this week with a, a street shoot. Now, if you're new to me, I'm not a street photographer by nature, uh, by any stretch of the means. But I did that as a, a creative exercise and something to you know, kind of push my own boundaries and learn something new about my camera. And one of the things that I did while I was shooting was use the creative black and white mode in the camera. So I'm looking at the street, looking at the world in black and white. And I really liked the way that the, uh, the previews inside the camera looked and how they showed me things. I didn't shoot RAW plus JPEG, so I only have the RAW files, which is just RAW data. It's, you know, it's color in, in this case. And I wanted to mimic the look as closely as I could in Lightroom before I dive into Lightroom. So this is the shot I'm going to work on in the camera. And that's what it looks like coming out uh, you know, when you just click the shutter, you get that nice black and white preview. It's very rich. It's got a lot of uh, contrast. The blacks are very deep. And so I wanted to mimic that as closely as I could. So here in Lightroom, you know, this is the raw file. And this is the final version that I've come up with. Uh, fundamentally, it's boiled down to a preset that needs a little bit of tweaking, depending on the file, depending on the image. And that's true for any type of preset. But let me bring this color image into develop. And the very first thing I wanted to do, I tried to do, was go find, you know, a, a profile for black and white. Well, Lightroom doesn't have one. So that was kind of a bummer. Uh, played around a little bit with different ones and settled on, on Vivid was a good starting point. And what I was looking for here is not so much the color tones, but looking to see how deep those shadows got, how bright those highlights got, and to see, you know, that that, you know, that there's a bit of a contrast boost there happening as well. This is this is still kind of flat. That vivid came nice and you know it, it punched things up a little bit. Did have some type of color tinting on it. I don't care about that as much because I'm going black and white. Uh, and that's the very next thing that I did. I'm going to press the V key, V as in Victor. That switches me to black and white. So I'm already getting closer. Um, what I found at this stage was some of the details weren't as crisp, like these lines here in the chair, the little slats in the back of the chair, or the, the plaid print on this woman's shirt. So it went into basic panel and popped clarity up somewhere around, I think I settled around 25, just a, a good you know, baseline number. Does, now you're, you're never going to get you know, out of the shoot, hit a preset, you're done. That, that rarely happens. But I want to get a good baseline here. I didn't change contrast slider here, although I wanted more contrast. Instead, I went into the tone curve and applied this medium contrast curve. So that focuses down on the shadow areas, and that deepens those shadows, but kind of keeps the rest of the tones, upper mid-tones, highlights, even regular mid-tones, more or less unaffected. And that before and after, that was a nice that was a nice improvement. If anything, I wish that Lightroom would let me dial back some of the strength on this. I do tend to sometimes play with this area of the curve for other photos. Now the last bit that I did is I went into the detail area and I played with the masking slider. I'm going to press the option key and just start sliding this up and down. I'm really watching the black areas to see how much, these are all those shadows I played with, you know, how much of those shadows uh, do I have in there? Somewhere around this area and then I bumped up the sharpening for the rest of the scene. If you don't know how the, the, the detail panel in Lightroom works, when you adjust that masking slider and you're holding down the option key or an alt key on a Windows machine, Anything that shows black, there will not be additional sharpening. And anything else, you get you know some level of sharpening. If it's gray, you get some. If it's white, you get all. And so it's adding additional sharpening to the brighter areas of the image. Um, let me see if there was anything else. I think those were all the things that I settled on. Uh, maybe a little bit of noise reduction. I'm, a lot of my shots were at 6400 uh, ISO, so I did end up you know boosting up just like, you know, luminance, so you had a little bit less of the noise. You can notice that here as well. Took all of this stuff and saved it into a preset, you know, just uh, doing a, a preset save here. Let's show you the panel for that. So settings, where, where, you know what, I mean, do it this way, it's easier. 
press the plus key here and we can see you know this is this is the different stuff that you can select to choose for a preset well what did we adjust we adjusted the tone curve we did clarity we did sharpening that's this part here in the detail pane certainly did a black and white i turned on auto black and white mix because each photo is different and i'm looking for a starting point with a preset so just say use the auto button have my uh, luminance for noise reduction and then of course process version and calibration that's where we get that vivid camera style that was in there so all that stuff added together save that as a preset and that was pretty good so you know from now on i can just hit that sony black and white preset and get a good baseline when i'm shooting black and white and i either don't necessarily have to shoot raw plus jpeg or if i forget to switch the camera in that mode i'm not going to have to completely build a look from scratch i think the tip of the week is in the camera calibration section of lightroom's develop module all of those different camera styles there's you know those you know, creative modes sony calls them I, I i know nikon and canon have different uh, names for them fuji's got different names for them but any of these built-in looks that are in your camera a lot of them show up underneath camera calibration and if they don't you can spend a few minutes and craft your own make it into a preset and then if there's a particular type of look that you like from your camera but you still want to shoot raw so you give yourself flexibility to try other things get a preset going you can click on it once get a good baseline look and then tweak it from there like we do with all presets That'll do it for this week's in post. I hope you've enjoyed it. And if you did, please let me know somehow. Comments on the video are great. Subscribes are always appreciated as our social shares. And if you've got questions about photography, hit me up. I'd love to hear from you. You can contact me through my website, comments below. And I usually turn an answer around in a couple of days. And I might use your question as fuel for another idea for the next in the field or in post video. So uh, I, I can't stress enough how much I appreciate your questions coming in. Well, until next time, my name is Scott Davenport and happy shooting.